guys, it's Adrian. Today I'm here to bring you my sequel September wrap up. Before we even get started, a couple of things. First of all, sorry about the whole setup situation. The sun is going down at the moment. I have a new job in case you've missed any of my 30 day reading challenge vlogs. So I'm having to um, record at night now and I don't have a lighting system yet. So I, I just, you're gonna have to bear with me for a little while. Also, sorry that I look like crap and feel like crap. I have some kind of flu and today's the first day that I actually have energy to be able to sit in front of a camera and talk to you and be my usual chipper, cheerful self. In the month of September, I was doing the 30 day reading challenge as well as sequel September. I did my 30 day reading challenge vlogs. All of them are up except for the last one, which will come out tomorrow. I did indeed read a bunch of sequels. I got to almost everything on my TBR plus some things that were not sequels that I read at the beginning of the month. I'm going to talk to you about all of them. I will leave timestamps in the description box below in case you want to jump ahead because this probably will be a longer video because there's so many books and I didn't have time to do a mid-month wrap up this month. So it is what it is. The first two books I listened to an audiobook and they were non-fiction books about the one and only Mr. Rogers. For those of you who grew up in America and who are uh, between my parents age and my age then you know who Mr. Rogers is. He is an American icon. Anyway the first book that I listened to was The Simple Faith of Mr. Rogers Spiritual Insights from the World's Most Beloved Neighbor by Amy Hollingsworth. This one was the spiritual background between all of Mr. Rogers' moral codes that he taught us as we were growing up as kids. And I always knew that Fred Rogers was a Presbyterian minister, but I never really stopped to take the time to look at the things that he was teaching us and where they come from spiritually. He did a very good job about not enforcing his faith on children. He wanted every child to feel loved and accepted, whether they were children, atheists, Muslims, it didn't matter to him. We were all special in our own way. The author of this book, Amy, was very good friends with Fred Rogers. She was a journalist and became friends with him on a personal level over time. And she had some insight into how he was feeling and how things were going in his life and how he felt about certain issues that were going on in the world and how he felt about his faith and the morals that he taught the children. And it was just a great little book. I got so much out of it, so many things that made me stop and think, especially as I was a parent and looking at how I view my own children. It's really cool to see the difference as how we view ourselves as children when we're children and how we view our own children as adults. To see that sort of comparison in my own life 30 years later, it just, it was really cool. I really enjoyed it. When I finished that one, I wanted to find a book that was narrated by Mr. Rogers because Mr. Rogers just has this sort of calming, slow voice and it was just, I needed to listen to it. So I then listened to You Are Special, Words of Wisdom from a Beloved Neighbor, written and narrated by Fred Rogers. I ended up giving this one a 3.5 stars. By the way, I didn't mention the last one. I gave a 5 stars because I really enjoyed it. This one I only gave a 3.5 stars to, mostly because they were just little tidbits of information. I feel like if I had listened to this one separately from the other one and not maybe uh, in succession of each other, I would have liked it a little bit more. But I felt it felt repetitive to me because I had just read a lot of it from the book. Regardless, I still really enjoyed it. It was a quick little audiobook. I think it was like an hour and a half long and it was it was definitely worth it. The next book that I read was part of a buddy read that I did with Julian Page from Pages and Pens. She was hosting a Twitter buddy read again. This one was God's Grave by Jay Kristoff. This is the second book to the Nevernight Chronicles. I gave this one a 3.5 stars. I can't really talk to you about what this is about because it's obviously the sequel to Nevernight. This is the first sequel that I completed this month and it was okay. It wasn't a bad book at all by any means, but it wasn't as good as Nevernight. If you, I feel like sometimes when we read a book that is so incredible, we expect the sequel to be even better and this one was not better. This one was worse in, in my own personal opinion. I did like the characters. Um, what I did appreciate about this one is that it wasn't quite as dark and evil as the first one. Uh, although there, there were definitely things. Some of the things I saw coming in this book, some of the things I didn't, so I did like that it took me for a surprise. But all in all, it just wasn't quite as good as I was hoping for. Next up, I read Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. This is the third and final book to the Infernal Devices series. So I got one series, checked off my list, check, check, very exciting. 
I loved this book. I picked up this book and I forgot how much I loved the characters in this book. I think I've mentioned it in a couple tags that I've done over the past couple years that this um, particular group of individuals, these students, they're very um, sarcastic. They have a lot of banter that goes on between them. And I really loved that. These characters are so endearing. I, I loved the characters. I just, I couldn't get enough of them. The f romance in this one did frustrate me a little bit. I, it kind of explained what, what was in the end. I loved it so much that I gave it a five stars. And then I went and picked up City of Bone by Cassandra Clare, which is not a sequel. It is a first book in the Mortal Instruments series. I have not yet read them, but I wanted to get to this series because I do know that we get some mention of the characters from the Infernal Devices in later books. I can't really tell you why or who because it's a spoiler, but there are two particular characters that I'm very excited to see. I didn't get to that part yet. The book was okay. But I only ended up giving it a 3 stars because it wasn't quite as good as the Infernal Devices. I did know that going in, so it wasn't a huge disappointment for me. I knew that a lot of people liked the uh, Infernal Devices series better than the Mortal Instruments series. I am going to continue on the series mostly because I want to see where these other characters come into play, if they come into play, and how much they come into play. I didn't quite enjoy these characters as much, but I am curious to see where the story goes. I sort of feel like not a whole lot happened in this book, and yet it was a good book. I mean, it was an easy read, it was a quick read, so I may as well just get on with it. And then, finally, finally, can somebody say hallelujah? I finished The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Mass. I have been reading this book probably since July, after I finished Air Fire. I wanted to get to this one before Queen of Shadows because I knew I needed to read it first, but I just kind of wanted to finish on with the story and I didn't want to read this one and go back in time. Now I have read Queen of Shadows, which is the next book that I'm going to talk to you about, so I am glad that I did read this book, but when I was reading it, it was tough for me to get into. I will say that I loved how the story sort of builds upon each other, and the last story was by far my favorite, and it kind of tied everything together, especially when it comes into the next book. So if you are reading the Throne of Glass series, I would recommend you read this one before Queen of Shadows, because Queen of Shadows sort of assumes that you've read this book, and it starts off with a bunch of details from this book. So definitely do that. You could also read this one as the first book. I personally wouldn't recommend it. I liked reading it this way because there is some information in here that you sort of know or you have a clue to in the second or the third book, but it doesn't get revealed until the second or third book. So I think it's better to read this before Queen of Shadows, in my personal opinion. Everybody has their own opinions. My word is not all. So do what you want to do. But anyway, I read it between Air of Fire and Queen of Shadows and I really enjoyed it. I gave this book a four stars. The next book I read was Wayward by Billy Crouch. This is the second book to the Wayward Pines trilogy. I read Pines, oh, I don't even know, somewhere in the summer or in the spring. And I liked it, but it was not what I expected it to be. I don't know what I was expecting it to be. Pines is a story about a detective named Ethan Burke and he lands up in this town called Wayward Pines and everything's kind of screwy and he can't get in contact with the outside world and the town people are acting really weird and he just doesn't know what's going on. So Pines, you're trying to figure out what is happening in this little town, which is by the time you get to Wayward, you know what's happening in the little town. So my issue with Pines was that it turned out to be the sort of kind of book that I wasn't expecting it to be and not my favorite kind of book. With Wayward though, I knew what I was in for, so it was okay and I enjoyed it. I ended up giving this one a four stars. It was interesting, it was intriguing. I do feel like not a whole lot happens in this book, but it did end in a huge, huge cliffhanger. But like I said, I gave this one a four stars. I did enjoy it. I am glad that I carried on with the series because I was thinking about not carrying it on with, on with it after Pines, but I actually really enjoyed it. And it's not the only series this month that that happened to me in, by the way. Next up, I finished Queen of Shadows by Sarah J. Mass. This is the one to fourth book in the series, fifth if you're counting Assassin's Blade. Um, this book got really big. This book was over 650 pages. So I am surprised that I finished it in September and still had time to read other books. I really enjoyed this one. I gave it a 4.5 stars. I enjoyed the characters a lot more in this book than I had in previous books. The only thing is with this book, and I don't know if it's because I was really tired or I wasn't paying attention, but I felt like 
I missed something somewhere a couple times. Like all of a sudden we thought that characters didn't know what was going on and then they did know what was going on and I missed that jump. I'm, I'm sure that it's in the book and I just missed it. But because of that, I only gave it a 4.5 stars. Otherwise, I may have given it a 5. I really enjoyed this one. Next up, I read The Last Town by Blake Crouch. This is the third and final book of the Wayward Pines trilogy. This book, guys, is definitely a horror book. I've learned something about myself by reading this book. Apparently, I can read horror books and not be too freaked out, not have too many nightmares. But this one, it's got monsters, it's got your typical psychopath, it's got a couple of them, by the way. It's got just crazy, crazy craziness that goes on in this book. It was fantastic. I'm so glad that I continue on with this series. This one got a 4.75 stars for me. I've got a spoiler-free series review coming out for this in a week or so for October. If you're looking for like a marathon series to read for the month of October, I would really suggest the Wayward Pine series. The first book doesn't start off like that, but the more you move on in the series, the more creepy, the more horror-like it actually gets. So good, guys. So good. Speaking of series that I'm glad I continued on with, if you missed it way back in January or February, I did a series that I plan on DNFing video, and this series was on it, but I had the audiobook available and I didn't have anything else to listen to, and it was four hours, so I thought, eh, why not? Give it a try. So I listened to Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shauna McGuire. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I talk all the time about how I did not like Every Hard Doorway. It was way too 80s vibes for me. It was way too kind of crappy horror movie vibe. I love the writing. I love the world building. But the book was too dark for me. I didn't like it. And I knew Down Among the Sticks and Bones takes place in this 80s horror movie, one of these worlds that these kids travel through. The lands the, are like fantastically done, the writing is fantastically done, but the first book was too dark for me. So I figured the second book, I'm gonna hate it. It was read by Shauna McGuire herself, which I think is like what did it for me. But I really loved it. We took place in this, this the Moors, this evil 80s horror-like land, but you got a taste of the characters in the land, so it sort of made what happened in the first book for these two specific characters make more sense to me, and I can appreciate it more, and I can appreciate these darker lands more. I absolutely loved it. In fact, I picked up the next one right after, which I have not yet finished as of recording this video, but I'm a big fan. I'm kind of kicking myself in the butt for giving away my book because I want all the series now. So if you are ever trying to give up on a series, just try the audiobook because it might help. So those are all the books that I read. I quickly, quickly, quickly want to mention the two books that I'm in the middle of. I'm in the middle of Beneath the Sugar Sky by Shauna McGuire, which is the third book to the Wayward Children. I almost want to say it's called Wayward Children series. I don't know. I forget. So far, not quite as interesting to me as Down Among the Six and Bones shockingly enough, but I can't judge it quite yet because I haven't finished it yet. So you have to wait for my October wrap up. And I'm also in the middle of Days of Blood and Starlight by Eleni Taylor. I am currently 145 pages in. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to finish this one in October. I might have to put it down uh, for other books. I've got some buddy reads going on and I just started a new job. So I'm a little bit stressed, <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this goes. I do. I will finish in November if I don't get to finish it in October. So those are all the books that I read in the month of September. Let me know down below what was your favorite book that you read this month. If you would like more information on any of these books that I read, more of my feelings in more detail, you can check out any of the vlogs from the 30 day reading challenge. I will have them in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you have not yet, I would love for you to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.